Okay, moving into the lower half of the body now, um, still sticking with the appendicular skeleton. And we're going to move into the pelvis and the lower lower limbs or the legs, obviously. Uh, so this video will focus on the pelvis. Pelvis, uh, or the pelvic girdle, is made of two large hip bones. We call them coxae, C-O-X-A-E. So I have one here and one here. Uh, and actually, let me get my pointer up. Um, and those are called coxae, but actually the coxae are um, formed by three separate bones. We call the ilium, the ischium, and the pubis. Okay. Uh, before I get to those, what's the role of the pelvis? The pelvis job is to um, obviously attach the lower legs to the bottom half of the body. Uh, so you can see here, these two big bones right here and here are the femur they are fitting into the pelvis. Uh, in addition to that, they protect uh, and surround our lower abdominal organs and reproductive organs. So they form another little cage uh, where that can occur. Now back to what I said about... Um, the three different bones that make them up. So this, this is a pretty good picture of what this looks like. So I have three bones. You see the yellow is the ilium here and here on both sides. The pink or orange, whatever you want to call that, uh, is the pubis here and here. And then the purple is the ischium here and here. Okay. So those three bones, as you get older, and this happens pretty early in life, they fuse together and they form one bone coxi. This is the anterior view up here. So you see that the pubis is our most anterior portion of the pelvis or the pelvic girdle. Uh, whereas the um, ischium, the purple, is the lowest portion of the pelvic girdle with the ilium you see being up top. Um, now, there are a few important things you need to know here about the pelvis and some structures on the pelvis. I want to point out two on this this diagram and then I'll, I'll move on to the next diagram at the very bottom and it's not labeled on here it's in your note packet that i gave you this spot here of the issue where i have my pointer here and here and, and also down here on the bottom that's called the ischial tuberosity the ischial tuberosity uh, is the lowest point of the pelvis so when you're sitting in your chair um you know you're watching tv you're at school take notes whatever and you're sitting straight up, all of your weight is being supported by the bottom part of the pelvis or the ischial tuberosity. Okay, so that's the very bottom part. This part right here, see, we have bone all over, but then uh, there's this little piece of ligament right here. This ligament is called the pubic symphysis. The pubic symphysis job is to fuse together the two pubic bones at the front. So it really kind of completes the cage at the front. This is going to be really important uh, for females, especially because uh, this is going to loosen up during childbirth, allow the, the birth canal to spread. One more thing I'll point out on this diagram before we move on is that the sacrum and the coccyx, uh, obviously part of the vertebral canal, the very bottom of the vertebral canal, they form the back part of the pelvis or the back wall. Uh, so they do have a very important part uh, and role in uh, helping us form the pelvis. Uh, now, looking at some structures on here, point out a few things. You see right here, the first one, uh, this is called our sacroiliac joint. So basically where the sacrum or sacrum uh, combines with and articulates with the ilium. Remember, the ilium is the top portion of, of our hips. Okay, so the sacroiliac joint, very important joint here. Sometimes you'll hear of injuries where people, um, you know, might have strained or had some issues with their sacroiliac joint or gotten a little bit out of kilter because uh, their hips might be out of line or something. So that's a that's a very important physiological joint right there. It's not labeled on this page. It is in your note packet. This right here, um, where my pointer is here and here, you could feel this on yourself. Um, if you basically put your hand kind of at your belt line on the front side um, and find the point of your hip, this is called this anterior superior iliac spine. Okay, so here and here. This is a very important um, landmark uh, that diagnosis can be made. But if you've ever heard of a hip pointer, somebody has a hip pointer, there's some ligaments that attach here that um, are very important. Uh, and, and, and this is a landmark where they can palpate that and find that. So some you can find on yourself when you're trying to identify parts of the pelvis. Uh, you see this big hole here, this black area. If I was to turn this thing to the side, we'd see it a little better. Um, 
this is called the acetabulum. The acetabulum's role is to accept and articulate with the head of the femur, okay? So going back to this, you see how the head of the femur goes into this point right here, okay? That's a very big, big ball and socket joint where the head of the femur fits into the acetabulum, that hole on the side of the pelvis. Um, we talk about all, a ton of foramen throughout this unit. Uh, we talked about a bunch in the skull, tiny itty bitty foramen. Well, we have one on here. This is the largest foramen in the body. This is the obturator foramen. Okay, we got one on either side of the pubic symphysis, the obturator foramen. Uh, that allows uh, the passage of something called the obturator nerves uh, and some blood vessels are going to pass through there. So it's this huge opening in the, um, in the wall, kind of formed by the pubis and the ischium uh, and the junction between those two things. I already mentioned the pubic symphysis on the pre previous slide. Uh, this is a piece of cartilage that is really important, holds the uh, front side or the anterior side of the, of the pelvis together, and that is a ligament um, that holds these things together. Or excuse me, that's cartilage where these things are joined together. Uh, now, there's a couple different uh, areas of here uh, that you need to be aware of. So we have something called the false pelvis and the true pelvis. The false pelvis is this part way up top here. Okay, so if I were to draw a line from the anterior superior iliac spine on this side to this side, that would kind of outline something we call the false pelvis. This is above what we're going to call the pelvic rim, which we'll get to in a minute. And it's the area where the, the hips are um, flared and wide because of these iliac bones, okay? Um, so the false pelvis is above here. The true pelvis, if you think of childbirth, uh, there's this thing called the birth canal. So um, this area that I'm circling here, and if I go back, the area that I'm circling here, between all of the bones and in front of the sacrum and the coccyx. This is called the true pelvis in here. So um, basically a big cage surrounded by all those bones. And that's going to form our, our, um, our birth canal, excuse me. So with the true pelvis, the first thing we got to know is something called the pelvic brim. The pelvic brim is the boundary, okay? And, th and this is hard to do on video just looking at a diagram. You got to actually hold a pelvis in your hand and, and find this thing. But the boundary... Uh, this bony border that leads to the true pelvis at the top. That's called the pelvic brim. And it also it might be called the pelvic inlet. So now, if you're thinking of childbirth again, the baby is going into the pelvic brim from the top. Okay, that's the pelvic inlet. If I were to turn this pelvis upside down and look at it from the bottom, there's something called the pelvic outlet. Pelvic outlet is the lower limits of the true, true pelvis. And again, that's the bottom of the birth canal. Okay, so again, I have false pelvis up here at the top where the hips are really wide. The pelvic brim or pelvic inlet, which leads to the true pelvis, which is where my pointer is right now. And then the bottom side would be the pelvic outlet. Um, that's really all the structures you need to know in the pelvis. Now, a big thing with pelvis when we're studying it is male versus female pelvis. Okay, it's very different. Okay. And you, you got to think, why do I want a female to have a different pelvis than a male? Well, females are going to do a few different things than what the males are going to do, mainly childbirth. All right, so how are they built differently in order to do that really important life function? Okay, so a few things you can notice right off the bat. First of all, females are going to have a have wider set hips and a shorter um, pelvis in general. Okay, so if you notice, the males is a little bit longer, a little bit taller, whereas the females is shorter. We want to try to make the birth canal shorter for the baby to have to go through. The hips are a little bit wider, like I said. Uh, so this false pelvis at the top is going to be wider than the false pelvis at the top than the males. A male will have a narrower and a deeper pelvic outlet. So basically the sacrum is going to be longer. Uh, where in, in, in narrower, whereas in females, the sacrum uh, is going to be a little bit wider and the pelvic outlet is going to be larger or, or wider. 
uh, with a short and a flat and a wide uh, pelvic, or excuse me, sacral. This is one that we don't, that a lot of females don't like to talk about, but the male's coccyx is actually going to be a lot less movable. Okay, now I'm not saying you go around wiggling your coccyx, but uh, the coccyx for females will sometimes move and bend or even possibly break during childbirth. So they're built in a way that allows that to happen where um, it's not going to cause damage. Um, there's something called the subpubic angle. So this area formed by uh, below the pubic bones and between the ischial bones. Okay, this is the subpubic angle here and here. In females, the subpubic angle is going to be greater than 90 degrees. And the subpubic angle is sometimes called a pubic arch. So either one of those is correct. This, this is going to be greater than 90 degrees in females and less than 90 degrees in males. In females, the pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis, this piece of cartilage right here that holds these bones together, um, is going to soften. And when that softens, it stretches a little bit and it allows the birth canal to open up a little bit more. Um, and then just in general, females are going to have some lighter and a little bit more fragile uh, hip bones and pelvic bones that allow for them to move a little bit during childbirth so that this, uh, the passage of the child can get through and the birth canal is able to open up a little bit more. Um, so that is our pelvis, again, protecting reproductive organs and um, attaching our legs to the lower half of our body.